So, uh, yeah, I think for this session right now, we're going to momentarily step away from uh, the, the really nitty-gritty legal stuff uh, for free software and talk about something that has more practical use um, on the commercial side of things uh, if you're developing and looking to monetize or distribute your, your software uh, project. So we're going to take a look at trademarks. Right, so uh, to give you a quick breakdown of what we're going to talk about in this segment. Um, I'll give some definitions of what a trademark is, uh, uh, why it's important to have a good name and logo for your software project. Uh, I'll go through some points to explain uh, trademark infringement and its consequences, and finally, we'll have some minor tips uh, to how to check for and how to register uh, your trademark. So what is a trademark? Uh, yeah, basically, it is a sign uh, used by a person or an organization or a company, et cetera, et cetera, to distinguish their product, to distinguish a product or service uh, from that of a competitor. So it can be a name, it can be a logo, a design, even a color used in a certain way. Uh, yeah, but names and logos are usually the most common uh, trademarks that are out there. So basically by recognizing the trademark, uh, users, or uh, users or customers can identify which product or which service uh, originates from a particular source or a particular company. So yeah, up on the slides, you know, you can see uh, examples uh, of the ver various trademarks that I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, yeah, uh, the logo of a company can be a trademark, for example, you know, the the, uh, the yellow M of McDonald's or the swoosh for Nike, uh, but also the name itself. You know, the, the, the name Nike is a trademark in itself, I'm sorry, uh, as the name McDonald's uh, for their respective industries. So why are we talking about trademarks now? Um, yeah, basically when a user is searching for a piece of software or an app to um, fix a problem that they're working with or to uh, uh, do something. Uh, the first thing that they will encounter when they come across your software project is, of course, its name or its logo. Um, it's therefore important, you know, that you uh, come up with a good name, uh, make a good impression. Uh, an unfortunately named project, you know, can slow down its adoption. If people do not take the name seriously, for example, or if people uh, have trouble remembering uh, the name of your project. So um, some things to consider uh, would be to give a name that gives users an idea of what the project is about uh, or it related to what the project is being used for. Um, and yeah, as well as you know, one that's easy to remember. I think that you know, for plenty of developers, they uh, have this idea that if the code and if the, the app is effective enough in, in doing what it does, um, that would just automatically means uh, it, it gets adopted. Um, I, I would agree that the efficacy of a particular piece, uh, of a particular software project does play a part in um, how it gets adopted and, and it, it, how effectively it gets adopted by its user base. Um, but I think that, that there's something more as well if, if you're looking to commercialize your project. Um, we have to be aware that there are so many different apps, uh, uh, programs, software out there in the ecosystem. Um, that I, so I think that there is some commercial value at least uh, to make sure that your project stands out uh, and capture the interest of the user. Um, the important thing about trademarks is that, you know, um, trademarks are exclusive. Uh, you can't use a name or a logo that's already trademarked by another company or another uh, organization. There's an asterisk to this, which I will get back to, but generally that is the um, underlying principle. Um, yeah, basically this means you're not allowed to use the name of uh, or logo of uh, a similar project. The, yeah, and if the unauthorized use of the logo or a name of uh, uh, another company, another project, uh, would result in trademark infringement, and that means getting sued. So I'm sure that's what everybody is trying to avoid. So. Avoid that. So it's important to note that you know trademark infringement uh, is not just about using the same name or uh, logo. Uh, it's also using something that is substantially similar. Uh, the main question to ask is, uh, if I use this logo, will it cause confusion within the customer base or the user base uh, about where the product or service that I'm using originates from? 
So what the law is concerned here is just basically to avoid this confusion. Um, it also protects the trademark holder, uh, or, or basically your company, uh, from any damage to your reputation. Uh, that can arise to you know, a difference in quality uh, of the product or service uh, provided by a copycat or an infringer. So um, as an example, uh, you can take a look at what I have up on the slide here. You have on the left, Starbucks coffee, and you have on the right, uh, Satarbucks cafe, which is a copycat. Uh, it, it's, it's, yeah, it, it's a copycat. So the logos look similar. They have the similar, uh, a similar design, a similar layout. You know, Some things have changed, so they're not exactly the same, but they are similar. So um, I think a lot of people would, would argue that, you know, yeah, if you look at the, the, the copycat on the right, there's no way you're going to confuse that with uh, uh, Starbucks coffee. But this is, some, this is an example that I've chosen that um, contains quite a substantial amount of difference. There are logos out there that you know, actually actively try to uh, confuse and try to take credit for um, um, comp what, what companies have done with their product uh, in order to just like, get quick, quick and easy business. So if Starbucks right now sues the copycat for trademark infringement, uh, the question for the courts would then be, you know, would someone who is going into a coffee shop to grab Starbucks coffee, um, uh, would they be confused? Or, or would they be confused that uh, they're getting Starbucks coffee or if, uh, or, or uh, when they're not, yeah. And if they get food co uh, poisoning, if they go to Starbucks cafe, uh, would they think that, they got, uh, that, that Starbucks is responsible for their food poisoning? So the court has then to make a judgment on this, and it takes into account uh, numerous factors, you know, uh, in order to, to decide whether there's confusion within the customer base. Um, if they find that consumers are more likely to be confused, then they would say, okay, yes, uh, the copycat is, in fact, uh, infringing on the trademark of Starbucks. Uh, but, you know, um, as I said, there's an asterisk to everything. It, it really depends on the situation at hand. Um, in some cases, the same name uh, or sign can actually be used for two different companies if uh, their user bases are different enough. For example, if they are in two completely different industries. So if we go back to this uh, uh, example again, let's say, I mean, Starbucks deals with uh, F&B food and beverage. Um, and let's say Satarbaksh, instead of uh, selling coffee, they sell vintage records, something completely uh, 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 disconnected from coffee. So um, if the courts look at this and say, okay, everybody who goes to buy Starbucks coffee, they know what they're getting. Everybody who goes to buy Satarbaksh coffee, they know it's not Starbucks. They know it's just, you know, vintage records. Then there is no confusion then uh, it, it's very likely that you know, the, uh, the trademarks are both allowed to stand and there is no uh, infringement uh, in this situation. So yeah, this is all a very basic breakdown of the principles involved. The statement to keep in mind is always it depends on the specific situation. So do I need to register my trademark? Um, this is, there is a similarity in trademarks to copyright in that uh, you do not need to do anything in order for you to have copyright. Similarly, you know, there's no real obligation to um, apply for a trademark or to register a trademark in order for a name or logo to be uh, uh, used for your project. Um, in other words, yeah, uh, you can uh, have an unregistered trademark and you can use the, the, the letters like TM, trademark, uh, to serve as a notice to the public that this particular name, this particular logo, you are using it as a trademark and it is unregistered. However, you know, if you don't register your trademark, um, you run several risks. Uh, you run the risk that someone down the line might actually register your, th that specific name or that specific logo uh, with uh, the authorities, um, which would be troublesome for you. So if, if this happens, what, what happens is that, you know, if you want to dispute this uh, uh, a copycat trademark that has already registered their trademark while you haven't, then you have to come up, you know, you have to produce evidence that, you know, you came up with the, the, the name or the logo first, uh, you started using it first to sell your products or to, to distribute your app. Uh, you have to show that it's widely recognized by the public and your user base and that it specifically, uh, that your user base specifically associates this uh, mark with your app. 
uh, or to your software or to your goods and services and not to the copycat or the competitor, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, whenever you try to dispute something like this, um, it takes time, money, and effort. And uh, that's something that I, I, I think we all want to avoid. If you do register your trademark, however, you, know, you, you gain a certain number of advantages and additional protections. Uh, these vary in details depending on which country or jurisdiction you register your trademark in. Um, but the basic protection is that you know, the authorities, the state, formally recognizes that you are the person using this trademark. Um, so anybody who comes along to want, who wants to dispute this, they have to go through what I just mentioned, you know, all the time, effort, and money to uh, dispute uh, your use of the trademark, uh, which places them in a more difficult uh, situation because the burden of proof is now on them. And registered trademarks, you know, you can append this R uh, to indicate that, yeah, this logo or this, uh, this name is, is being used as a registered trademark. So what are the consequences of trademark infringement? Um, facing a lawsuit uh, would be costly you know, uh, payment of monetary damages to the original trademark owner, legal fees, court fees, attorney fees, blah, blah, blah. Um, additionally, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you lose, you still need to come up with a, a, a new name anyway at the end of the process. And um, by doing so, you know, you can potentially, or, or it's most likely that you will alienate your user base or confuse them because you have to explain why you're changing your trademark. You have to explain to them why something that they're familiar with is now being replaced with something else. In, yeah, it's therefore vital that you check uh, that the name uh, that you intend to use for your project is uh, not already taken or substantially similar to uh, an already existing trademark. So, uh, how do you check if your potential name or logo for your software project is already trademarked? Yeah, you can run a search for trademarks uh, that would conflict with uh, the name you've chosen uh, with the EU IPO, uh, the EU uh, Intellectual Property Office, or at the WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Office, uh, Global Brand Database at the following links that are up on the slide. So photos uh, if, if, if you're interested. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't cost you anything to do a search uh, on these websites. I mean, additionally, you know, it, it's also good to do a search for unregistered trademarks as well uh, to see if there's any potential conflict with existing marks that are already out there in the wild. You know, you just do this with simple online searches, uh, look in public source code repositories, uh, and, you know, check domain names. Uh, just see if there's anyone out there who's already using your mark uh, uh, and, and the same name as your project. Right, uh, what do you get out of registering your project name as a trademark? Uh, so it grants you exclusive rights in all current and future member states of the European Union. You can up, uh, obtain these rights uh, through a single registration. Uh, and uh, there is a guide for how to do so at this website. And unfortunately, it can be pricey. I mean, it costs 850 euros to do this, um, yeah. So, but at the end of the day, you know, it's important that you make the decision uh, as to whether there's a potential confusion uh, with the name that you're using and the mark that you're using, uh, and whether th this is a worthwhile investment for you and your project, it, because especially if your goal is to uh, eventually commercialize and monetize and distribute your software. So yeah, uh, I hope this was uh, practical and useful for you, uh, gives you some food for thought about trademarks and free software projects. So thank you.